Ey. What's up? I'm here. You're there. Octopus here. Sky prop. Terry 3G. Sky prop. Octopus here. Strat CPO. What's up, Average Joe? Indiana? Vince? Dan? Trolls? BC Rich? Bill France? Buzz Wilson? Frank C. Nelson? Majestic BB and J? We got uh, Cleveland? Oh, God. This thing just keeps popping up. Wants me to. Wants me to uh, run an ad. What's up, John? What's up, Ben Coombs? Starman45? Bill France? What's up, Nick? Hey, what's up, speaker? What's up, Maxverse? What's up, Matt? Did it. What's up, Mike? Rabbit Rich. What's up, Robert? What's up, Zach? Shape? What's up, James from Phoenix? The Phoenix James. Yeti Matsi, Tactical Six String, Jack Collins, Christopher Neiman, Vimps, Coots, Fratless Egg, Fast Eddie, John Jordan. We've got Dave, We've got Frank, Alexander, Ripley. And of course, Guitar Man 45. As he goes to PRS Double Neck Fund. Never, never lose sight of the Double Neck Fund. What's up, Rico? SMY. What's up, Bob? Good to see you. Yeah, I did the Kramer tonight. Because we'll, we'll continue the, the saga. Where I last left you was with the... Uh, that fender. Hey, what's up, Mike? Safe and sound in Florida? That's good to hear. Sounds like uh, not a lot of people uh, that I knew down there were hit. It landed a little south of them. The people that mom friends with are in like Sarasota and Tampa, and I think it hit like in Naples. So, uh, good to hear you. Uh, you escaped the wrath. It looks like a lot of people were were deeply affected by it. Mm. That is delicious. What's up, Ed? What's up, Michael? Yeah, I went to a puffer. Get the, get the Kramer out. We got John. We got Tony. More origin story, yeah. Hear the difference between a maple and a red roasted fretboard? Probably not, but my cat probably can. Um, she was sleeping up on here on the couch, and I had the window, this window up here behind me here, over there. I had it open. I had a fan in it, a box fan. And I had it on the maximum setting, which is, I'm going to, not going to, it's pretty loud. <laughs> Super loud. And I had the fan under my desk. It was kind of a hot day. We had the air conditioning going and we had the, you know, um, it was a while ago. And we had the dehumidifier going. And I had that fan going pretty high. And uh, she was over on the couch. And I see her go like. Like, she hears something. The ear is kicking up, and she looks over, and I look over, 
and it's a spider <laughs> crawling across a carpet. She can hear that spider crawling across the carpet from about 15 feet away with multiple loud fans in the central air conditioning system going. I was like, oh, what's that? Tuned right in. And I was like, oh my, okay, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's, uh, okay, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> She did not eat the spider. She was uninterested in it. She just heard it. I looked at her and I said, oh my God, it's a spider. <laughs> she hears that spider. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Work with big cats. They know where you are. Hands down before. Yeah, you know where they are. Oh, absolutely. Oh no, they got the... They got the radar. You know, their ears are so friggin' sensitive. Cats can hear the 60 cycle hum, or the 50 cycle hum in your walls from uh, the electricity. You can't see it very well. Listening is a different story. Agreed. I have seen the new PRS pedals. Would you would you own a pedal called horse meat? Well, welcome back. Welcome back, Nick. Glad you could make it. The cats can hear Ryan from 60 Cycle Home. Every cat. Everywhere. That's not Angie. That's an original work called Andy. That I wrote for my friend uh, Andy the Guitar Geek. Andy. Andy. I haven't seen you in a while. It's a work in progress. Pretty much Jersey head stuck, snapped off, fell off the dresser. It happens. I bet his fans can't make fun of names. Sure we can. They should have named it the PF245Z. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's catchier. Shot can roll on it, ad lib. Andy, it's a hit, man. It's a hit. It's a work in progress.
parallel mode. How many springs do I use? A one, a two, a three. The correct answer is three. And bonus points for those of you who got the reference. Those of you who did get the reference, you're old. <laughs> could sell anything. <laughs> Don't you kind of have to do that when you have a Floyd Rose? You guys have a good week? K Multimedia Tonex. Never heard of it. Is it a, a product? I gotta tell you right now, I'm not a fan of IK Multimedia as a company. I think they're um, you know, they're uh, they treat hardware like software and it really annoys me. It pisses me off, quite frankly. <laughs> because they can't they can't break out of their their software mentality, even though it's hardware. Can't can't do it. And so uh, you're, you know, you're you left with like um, 20 messages back and forth with customer service trying to get a firmware update. And they're like, "Oh, you just need to have the license transferred." It's like, "Bitch, I'm holding the license. How can <laughs> it's it's hardware? You see, in the real world, things don't you know, photons bounce off things have touch it's an electromagnetic force that keeps that binds molecules together and makes things that what we call reality and they can't break out of their digital mindset they're like well, you, the prior person licensed the hardware and you need to get the license train no I don't <laughs> like ah! A big pro I, I got a problem with IK Multimedia and Native Instruments. I'm looking both your ways. Get out of the 90s. <laughs> it's like, my God. Listen, and I can't say this enough. The stuff that goes with that hardware, firmware updates, drivers, you know, um, editor librarians. It's all worthless without the hardware. Absolutely worthless. So, I don't know why they treat it like software, but they do. And it, it's really a pain in the ass. Both IK Multimedia and Native Instruments uh, kind of suck. And I would advise against buying any hardware. Software is different. They're a software company. But hardware, God, they're just uh, a pain in the ass to work with. Just absolutely god-awful. Just, um... That's probably not... That's that's probably not the, uh, the glowing endorsement they, they were hoping for. Well, just compare that to, um, like, how a real hardware company like Yamaha or Korg, like, they just they just post everything related to their hardware up on a website. You don't have to even register. You just click a button. I'll, I'll download the firmware. I'll download the manual. I'll download the USB driver. I'll download an editor librarian. 
They're like, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, thank you. But not, not IK Multimedia. They're like, no. No, you, uh, you know, only the original purchaser gets that. If it's already been registered, too bad. And I'm like, oh, oh. So what you're saying is, even though I bought this used one for two fifty and a new one is three ninety nine, I should just buy one for three ninety nine on Amazon, pull out the little software ID, register with that, slip it back in and send it back for a real full refund, and you can just deal with that open box shit. Is that what I should do? Is that what you're saying? And they're like, okay, here's a link. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> that, that, that smacks some sense into them right away. They're like, no, that's, that's not a good outcome. I, I don't think it is, no. I agree, it's not a good outcome. But it's, quite, it's the situation I find myself in because you're putting me in it. <laughs> oh. It's what we call a good, it's what we call a float, a little float scheme. I'm just gonna float that board for a couple of days. I'm not even gonna take it out. I'm just opening it up. I'm just looking for the card. Oh, there it is. Let me register it. Let me down everything for my used item. Just slip that card back in. That's why you see on Amazon and on Sweetwater and on their website, people going, hey, I went to register this and someone had already registered it. Oh, really? Huh. Huh, interesting behavior. It's like, what did they think was going to happen? You think people were going to go, oh, okay, you win. No, they're going to game whatever the way they can to get it what they want and abuse whatever system they need to to stick it to you. And apparently that has happened because I see that up there. I see that on, like, um, really, IK Multimedia's, like, um, support forum. If you ever gone, because I went there going, hey, how do I get the firmware update? And they were like, you don't. And I was like, ah, uh, no, no, I do. <laughs> and and they, they did. They did. It took 20 messages back and forth, but they saw the light and did they did send it to me. Can they send me fan mail? I've been selling for years. I have a P.O. box uh, yeah, for that. I, I don't know if I have it. I don't know if I have it listed um, on my channel or not. Let me check into that. Exactly, fan mail, letter bombs. Exactly, P.O. Box, Pixie Licks. I'm so famous, you could just send it to Pixie Licks Boston. It would, it would probably find me. Remember Spy Magazine used to do that? How famous are you? And, uh, they would, uh, they always put a return address, but they would send it to like, you know, Oprah Chicago and just see if it made it to her. And then just Oprah. <laughs> right? To see if it would just make it to Chicago and make it to her. They would just know where to go. Right. <laughs> Yeah, early days of Steam, your version's out of date. Well, you know what? They they added functionality and they had an editor librarian 
and they wouldn't get me they wouldn't let me download the editor librarian and even if I did download it it wouldn't work because it needed firmware 2.0 and there was no place for me to download the firmware and I I talked them into sending me both but still it's like it was it was it was too much effort <laughs> just just put a goddamn web page up with some links it's like it, it's it's really it's not that hard <laughs> like this guitar. Remember this one? It's the it's the 83. The 83. Mm, it's a good one. I did a full uh, redo on this. I got this uh, in 2013 and uh, I just sort of redid it last year. You know, I mean, for a guitar that's so old. It came with an EMG installed in it, but I pulled that out. I just put Duncan's in it. You know. It's got the OG trim. It, you know, it's so clean, but... Um, famously, these had a very thick uh, and very strong... Uh, I, I don't know if it's polyurethane or polyester, a coat that um what they call diamond coat so th they lasted you know as long as you didn't really uh, beat the piss out of it it wouldn't last for many many years <laughs> oh i definitely have a full video on this i have many videos on this oh what duncan's i just did the standard jb jazz set and one thing to add that that was the set that you would get if you um, if you bought a, uh, a a humbucker or it would be a double single double or whatever you know two humbuckers or humbuck two humbuckers in a single that would be it it would be a JB and a jazz I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they were using for most of their stuff. Uh, uh, it wouldn't have been this year. They were still using the Schaller pickups uh, uh, this year. It would have been three years later, I want to say. 86 is 83. 86, they went to all Duncan, uh, Seymour Duncan. Sort of a way they could still say made in USA because pretty much most of it. Well, the, the bodies and the necks were made in Japan, but I think they were painted in uh, New Jersey. So there was some manufacturing steps going on uh, in, in the U.S., N not just assembly. Yeah, it's Candy Apple. It's, it's Candy Apple. They made a Candy Apple Red and a Candy Apple Green. The original one I got was the green one, I think, with the maple fretboard. And um, that one was gone, and I wound up getting the red with the rosewood. And uh, it had the wide neck. In fact, we should... The 722 E chord sort of get into the... The main topic, where I left you last. In the, in the great saga that is my guitar history. It's at roughly 19, so I get that, the Strat, Christmas of 81, in, I want to say, summer or fall of 82, I have Seymour Duncan stacks put in it, because I just couldn't stand the hum, the 60 cycle hum, you know, from using a distortion pedal, and, um... You know, in the in the guitar, it's just it, it was so friggin' noisy that guitar. The sixty cycle hum was just incredible. So I I get the I get those Seymour Duncan stacks. I have those put in them. It, it doesn't really solve it. I'm still going back to the Ibanez Les Paul because it it's just it's, it's closer to what I want, right? It's got the humbuckers and 
You know, it's, it's, it doesn't have noise. It's a stronger output. It sounds better with, you know, metal songs. So, it, you know, I'm coming to realize that, you know, maybe the, you know, maybe the Strat wasn't great. So that summer of 82, um, I have, I think I'm, I, maybe it was the spring of 82 I had them put in because I think that summer I had the stacks already in there. I already had the, 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 the stacks and I went to, okay, so the, no, wrong, wrong year. Okay, fall of 82 I have them put in. I go through the winter, 82 to 83. And then that summer, I go to Berkeley and I still have the Strat. That's pretty much what I'm playing. I go there with the Strat and, you know, it's got the Duncans in it. And I'm still not, it's a heavy guitar. I'm still not crazy about it. You know, it's kind of over the top with the gold and everything. And, um... Berkeley ends, but I still keep going down in that area and hanging around. I spent the summer down in that area, and they had uh, La Salle music. They had Daddy's Junky music, I think. And they had um, E. Wurlitzer. And I remember going over there, which was had nothing to do with the world's a piano company. The guy's name was literally like Eugene something, like Wurlitzer. So... Uh, I go to E. Wurlitzer, and I walk in, I'm like, and they kind of knew me there. I was in there all the time. I'm like, hey, what's new? They're like, check out the new Kramers. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's got these locking Floyd Rose, you know? And they had a bunch of them on the wall, probably a half dozen. And they looked like this. And they had a green one with the uh, maple fretboard. I want to say it was like six ninety nine with a case. It wasn't cheap. And, um, because I remember it was like 735 with tax. And I was, I was, I was like all over it. You know, I, I never saw a guitar, you know. And it, and it stayed in tune. Just. Thing wouldn't go out of tune. I, I was like, this is unbelievable. Like everything I didn't like about my strat, I'm finding on this new one. It's got the locking trim, so it stays in tune. It's got two humbuckers, so there's no hum, and it's got the stronger power because I'm playing, you know. You know, I'm I'm not playing blues tunes, I'm playing friggin' metal tunes. And so, like, in terms of like being a fit. That was a much better fit for me. Not even close. And this was pretty much the guitar. One of these. Except it was the green and had the maple fretboard instead of the rosewood. And, uh, you know, I put a deposit down on it. And I'm broke. This is like probably September or October of 83. And, you know, can I go in there a couple of times, maybe in November or December and probably don't even go in January or, you know, I don't go back for a while. And finally I show back up again. I'm like, I, I really got to get this guitar. And they're like, yeah, we don't hold guitars like forever. That guitar's long gone. You know, we have your money so you can just use the store credit towards what it is. I was like, really? I thought when I put the money down on it, you kind of held it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we hold it for like 30 days, but if you don't like pay it off in that, we sell it and then you can just pick out another guitar. I was like, oh, it's like April. So I wind up getting one that looks exactly like this, except that the, the neck is like, you know, three millimeters wider. <laughs> it's like much, much wider. The guy even described, he goes, yeah, we got these new, these new Kramers and they got really wide necks. And I'm like, huh, really, really wide necks, huh? You say? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, it's right there. and they're trying to sell me on it, but I'm picking it up, and I'm going, oh, this, I don't like this. This sucks. I don't like this big wide neck on this. It was like a boat bottom, very flat on the bottom. They're called the boat. Some people love them. In fact, they're so rare. It was a transition neck. 
from when they were changing companies. They needed someone just to fill the friggin' the stock in once they cut ties with the old company. Who knows how that went down? But all of a sudden, they found themselves needing a someone until I think ESP could ramp up. But basically, they friggin' they changed hands, and this was just that. It's like a six-month window, maybe a 12-month window. Thanks, Tim. Send you my Mez Prestige. Oh, that's squirrel. You guys know because he needs a home. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll talk. We'll, um, I don't think you could send that to a P.O. box. Um, you might be able to if you took the neck off, Right? And, and, and put it in a small enough box, but I'm not sure that they would have... I'd have to double check. But I have everything sent to that P.O. box. I have a P.O. box. I have everything sent there. Uh, which would be no problem. I could put the neck back on it, you know. But it would make the box a lot smaller, right? You could double it up. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we'll talk about that. R2, R3. It was like an R6, Okay. And our friggin' six. <laughs> uh. Agreed. Agreed, Andrew. Prayers for those in Florida. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll we'll, we'll talk. We'll we'll figure something out. But I I I think you might have to take the neck on it off of it because I don't think they accept accept a box larger than a certain girth. Although I will say. I, I think I had a, a I had a full size guitar sent to me one time through China and it came through the post office, right? Instead of UPS, and that was a pretty big box and they accepted it. So maybe they do. I don't know. I'll check into it. It's whether or not they'll take it. What they do is they they put it to the side and then they put a, a little piece of paper in their in the the box, but it's only good for so long and then they ship it back. If it's not picked up, they don't they don't store it back there for very long. So you'd have to let me know when it's sent so I can check the box. Make sure I get it in time so before they go up, you didn't you didn't pick the box up, you know. Anyway. Um That was an excruciating level of detail. Um So I get the new Kramer. I take it home. I, I'm playing in like a new band, um, and uh, you know I'm I'm I think I'm loving the Kramer, right? I'm I'm sort of playing it. It's like '84, right? So certainly, I have it before school gets out in the spring of '84, without a doubt. And in like '84, you know '85, and by '86, man, I am like friggin' sick of this thing. I hate the wide neck. I hate it. And I'm like, where's my friggin' neck that I love? This neck. This neck is a gorgeous. I love this neck. And I was just, and we get in a whole new round. We become a Kramer dealer. And we get in a round of new Kramers that have a much smaller neck, just like this neck. And it's got the, you know, the tilt beak, you know, kind of like how my SM1 looks. Right, tilt back and it's like a tilt back and getting over, right? The sharp beak. And it says like Kramer American and it's got the block inlay and everything. And I was like, hey, is there any chance you can get me just a neck? And they're like, actually we can. It was 120 bucks. I said, done. Do it. In fact, when it came in, one of the owners looked at it, they they will they was they were like, Oh my god, this is really nice. You know, maybe we're not selling you this. <laughs> Like, I, I hand it over. And I wound up putting it on uh, uh, the guitar, and it just completely changed that guitar. It's a whole new guitar with that new neck. Sold the old neck, found a dude who wanted it, was able to sell the old neck. I think I sold the old neck for like 50 or 100 bucks. And, um, and I used like this guitar pretty much 86 into 87. <laughs> And in 87, could have been 86, but I think it's 87. I, it's a long story, but I pretty much get 
a an ESP Super Strat. So it's got the ESP headstock, their Strat headstock. You know that headstock, their vintage Strat style headstock. It's a little, it's a take on the Fender headstock. And it's their neck, which is a little chunky, but it's not wide, but it's just a little thick. It's like a vintage neck. It's got a white body. It's a single, single, double in their EMGs, which has got me like, you know, already grab, grabbing my attention because it has e EMGs. And um, and it's got a Floyd Rose. And I had never seen a Floyd Rose in a non-Kramer guitar before. That's the first time I had ever seen a Floyd Rose that wasn't on a guitar that had the name Kramer on the headstock. Because Kramer had the exclusive, you know, the exclusive rights to use that guitar, uh, that uh, um, the tremolo system on their guitars. So how the hell do they have it? It's because it was an ESP for the Japanese market. Apparently there was it, it was a thing, or it was like custom made, and um, I get that guitar, and I'm like, "This is the guitar." The speaker remembers that guitar. It's uh, white, and you know we would uh, jam with that. I had it for a little bit. I still had the I still had the Kramer. I'm, I, I think I forget if I got rid of the Kramer at that point. I think I I hadn't yet. I still have the Kramer. So I have the Kramer. I've got the new ESP, which I'm trying to, you know, integrate into my repertoire because it was expensive. I traded a couple items for it and, you know, really wish I had, you know, it was like a Strat a reissue that, you know, would be worth thousands of dollars right now. But it's like, whatever, <laughs> you know, did the deal, got the ESP. And uh, yeah, I never really gelled with it. Just never. The neck was kind of chunky and vintagey, and it wasn't as thin as the Kramer neck. The Kramer neck was so much thinner, and so was the even the Ibanez neck. And I was just like, I, I, I'm not digging this neck, you know. And so we're we're jamming. I'm jamming with the. Uh, hey, what's up, Black Shoe Bear? So uh, we're jamming at the Knights of Columbus Hall because, you know, that's what you do when you're a kid. And um, we take a break and we go up to uh, the music store, maybe to get a pack of uh, strings. And um, my boss is in there and um, he's got, I see right away because I had worked just like the day before, the day before that. And I see like a couple of new guitars on the wall that like immediately stand out to me. And I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, it's because this is the part of the story when I started hanging around with you. I totally remember that ESP. You're right. Right. Remember that ESP? Then you probably remember this. You were with me. You were with me when we went to the store that day. So we get to the store, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at it, and uh, I'll get the guitar. This is the, this isn't the, so this isn't the Kramer I had. This is you know an '83 Kramer, but it's not the one I had. It's somebody else's that somehow made it to me in 2013. I uh, bought it off a of Guitar Center used. Um, but this is the actual original Ibanez. I walk in, and this guitar is sitting on the on the wall. And I plot. True story. I am like, what the, what the frick? It's seen better days. It's, uh, it's lost quite a bit of its finish because of water damage. It was uh, flooded. It, that all happened here. That all happened in, uh, in, in this address because of the flooding it swelled up and then when it shrank the, the, the pain fell off I also got to get the back plate it's a it's a bit of a mess so I walk in there it's right remember this speaker yeah remember this remember we walk in there and this guitar is in the wall of course it doesn't have a scallop neck it doesn't have EMGs in it all right it's, it's a standard Ibanez RG 560 
And uh, and I'm like, what the hell is this? He's like, oh, those are the new Ibanez guitars. We just got them in. I'm like, really? And I like pick it up and I'm jamming it. And I'm like, this neck is so thin. I love the hard contours of the body. I mean, I am smitten. It is the anti-ESP. You understand what I'm saying? The, the, the ESP has got a big chunky neck and a big rounded strat body. And this thing is the complete opposite. And I am in love. And I'm like, I, I ask Mark, I go, uh, so like, what are we talking? He goes, with a case, 420. I'm like, done. <laughs> Was my cost five ninety nine if you bought it on the store shelf? My cost was four twenty. I'm like, ring it up. What's up, Quentin? And um, and I remember speaker going, "Are you like seriously buying that guitar right now?" I'm like, "I am. I am buying this. We are we are walking out with this guitar right." Now! <laughs> and we went back to the Knights of Columbus, and I remember it is like really liking the guitar and being like, wow, this is like so much better than that friggin' ESP. And being so smitten with the guitar, and I, and I mean absolutely smitten. And I, this hadn't happened to me, you know, I, I, I don't re really remember doing it with the Kramer. And I don't really remember doing it with the ESP. But I remembered when I first got the Strat, I'd just open the case and stare at it. I was just like in love with the guitar. And the same with this. I would just open the case and stare at this and go, and look at this thing. Look how amazing. This is unbelievable. Look how amazing this guitar is. Just absolutely blown away with, uh, with this guitar. And had to have it. Had to have it. And, uh, and that put me on a friggin' tear. Uh, hold on, hold on. I feel like, I feel like, a, I feel like it's a, a tad overblown. Where's my, uh, there we go. There we go. Hello, Chico. There you can see it a little better. And I just remember just so friggin' smitten with this guitar. They didn't make the edges quite as hard in later models. They didn't make the necks quite as thin in the later years, you know, after a couple of years. These really were unicorns, these first, this this first year. Which, if you know anything about Ibanez, the serial number will say um, 87, but you wouldn't be able to buy it. It actually wouldn't be in stores uh, until 88. I mean, it's just always one year off. That that, that flame, I just sold a flame uh, saber that I had, that I had fixed up. And um, that had a, uh, I think, a 91 serial number, but it doesn't appear. You can't, it's not in the 90 or the 91 catalog. It doesn't appear until the 92 catalog. So same with this. I might have to tune it. So um, I am like all in on Ibanez, like a game changer, like an absolute game changer for me. I am so friggin' uh, smitten with this guitar. I wind up getting a white RG550 with a maple fretboard. I actually know the guy who I sold that to, a friend from college. I still friends with him through Facebook, and I. I should get it over here. He still has it. He still has it after all these years. And um, I want to say it was around that time that the guy came in with the Kramer Deluxe. The guy comes in the, the music store with a Kramer Deluxe. Which is, you know, it, it, that's not a cheap guitar. 
right? It's a Kramer American Deluxe. I can tell it's a Kramer American Deluxe. It's got the Duncan pickups in it, pick guard, right? Everything. But it's got a like a it's got like a Hondo neck on it, and the headstock is broken off. And it's it's in a, a it's in a Kramer case. And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, I owe money on. He had some story. I owe money on taxes or something. I was hoping to get like two hundred and fifty bucks for it. You know, two hundred bucks. And Mark looked at it. He says, mm, "Nah, I'm gonna pass." And I said, "Oh, I said, you know, I wish. You, too bad, you, you know, you you couldn't take, uh, you know, less." I said, "I, you know, I, I'd love this guitar." He's like, "Well, make me an offer." I said, "Well, I don't have much money." And I reached in my pocket and I had a fifty dollar bill. Who who has a fifty dollar bill in their friggin' pocket? I remember it. It was a single fifty dollar bill. I pulled it out and I said, "I got 50. He goes, "Done." And my boss had he, well, he was negotiating with him. He got a call from his wife. I was like, "Hey, it's your wife." He gets on the phone with the wife, and that's when the. So I go to before I do, and I turn to Mark. I go, "Hey, is it cool if I buy this guitar? I don't want you know." He's like, "No, no, no, I don't want it." You're good. You can buy it. I said, okay, good. I'm buying it. So we do the deal. I get the guitar. Again, it's got a broken Hondo head, head uh, neck on it. I'm gonna, But I had just done the neck thing. I had just done the whole neck with the other Kramer. So I'm like, we'll just order up another neck, right? So he gets off the phone with his wife, and he turns to me, and he goes, uh, 200 because that was the dude's last offer. He went from like two fifty to two hundred. And I go fifty. He goes fifty. <laughs> what? And he like looks back at the phone. <laughs> like he's gonna go call his wife. Don't call me. <laughs> oh, he was he was not happy with that fifty dollar price. He's like fifty. Well, yeah. I I couldn't believe it. I said he asked me what I had. I said I pulled out a fifty, and he took it. He's like, 50? Because <laughs> the case was worth more than 50. The pickups were worth more than 50. The Floyd Rose was worth more than 50. He did not have the nut I had to get. So I had to get the Kramer neck. I had to get a nut. You know, I had to do, I had to do all that. And, uh, but I got it done. And it was right around that time. It was like 87, 88, 89, 89 maybe. And I already had this, and I sell my other Kramer with the maple fretboard to Bobby. He always wanted the guitar. And um, I have the Deluxe. And a dude came in and traded in a Gem 777 signed by Steve I. And I wanted that guitar so bad, I wound up giving them deluxe for short money i mean i made some money on the deal because he knew what i paid for it but i said you know that guitar used is worth five five fifty six hundred bucks all day long you know they're already up to like seven something so i'm like you know i'm giving it i gave it to them for like 400 or something like that and i paid the rest and i got the gem 777 Wound up taking that home. I had that for a couple of years. Speaker probably remembers that. I think I used that on that one of the one of the high school gigs. Pretty sure I played the gem in one of those high school gigs. I think it was the Kramer. I want to say it was the Kramer for the first one. You know, and um, you know. And I want to say it was, uh, I want to say it was the, the, for the second uh, show, it was the, the gem. I 
totally remember the gem. That was a rare one, too. It was number 117. So it had a 7. Like, the, the more 7s. So like, if you had 777 or 777 or 177 or 277 or 37, the more 7s you had in your number, you had any 7s, right? It's better than 236, right? 354. Having a 7, because it was the gems, having a 7 in the number was considered to be, like, better. Because stupidity. But uh, it was a thing. And so this had, it was number 117, and it had the 117 matching case with the little badge. They didn't do that for all of them. Even had the badge matched case. Yeah, God, that was, that was a tragedy selling that guitar. I should have kept it. Yeah, I had the gem, the green 777. And I had, I sent that out to, um, I sent that out to this guy who was doing, he he was a, like a motorcycle artist and a car artist, right? He would paint like, like crazy designs. He was like this art dude, right? He saw like what they did with like, um, like Ibanez and, and, and uh, Kramer had done some graphics in Charvel. And he's like, oh, we can do custom painted guitars and all this stuff. And they're going to do like custom painted guitars. It's not going to be a uh, like a pretty big venture. And I guess that dude turned out to be pretty uh, unreliable. And um, and I was uh, they they were telling me I was lucky to get my guitar back, but I did get it back. And he did clear over the back of that uh, so that that signature because a lot of the signatures would wear off it was just done in them in like a felt marker they famously like would would smear off so it was ensconced which some people would say it ruins the value because you have added you know overspray to it but i don't know i think it i think it quite frankly enhances the value because you know you're never losing that signature and he had the little marking on there and all that stuff and the numbering so yeah loch ness green <laughs> Fluorescent green, 80s Kramer, the black pig and hard one Floyd Rose. Interesting. He told me, "Don't be afraid. Pick it up. I'll never be afraid of any guitar again." Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. I was giving lessons around that time, right? Teaching Frank, playing that guitar. I remember Frank. Um. Yeah, so it was right around that time. So I got this. I say to myself, you know what? Couldn't this guitar is awesome, <clears throat> but couldn't you make it better by scalloping the fretboard? <laughs> and I went down to Sears and bought myself a set of bastard cut files and worked from the 24th fret to the first fret. And scalloped it. Now I did, you can see up here, a lot of the inlays got wonky. But from the 12th fret down, um, this luthier uh, that I knew fixed them for me. Put them all back in. And did a great job. But yeah, you know, I, I'm going to work on it soon. I'm going to like completely give this guitar a bit of a makeover, fret-wise. It's going to be like a relic. You know, the one thing I noticed with the relics, they never relic the frets. Hmm. That's the, it's like a magic force field that protects the frets in the back of the neck from, from dents and gouges. Huh. Yeah. Go, oh, only the body. Hmm. Yeah. Odd. Hmm. <laughs> Frank drove us to school. He was a good player. Yeah, I remember Frank. Had that nice house. <laughs> of course you don't want frelic, relic frets. Well, then it's it's not really relic now, is it? Can't have it both ways. <laughs> uh, so I, I did the scalloping. 
And I added the EMGs. I really like the EMGs. I missed them out of the out of the ESP. And so I put the EMGs, and this is the one with the 89, so it's got the it's got the push pull. You know. <laughs> <laughs> This is a 1988 um, Ibanez RG560. I tell you, uh, once you start to get used to the scallops, boy, the scallops really are good. <laughs> Because you can just, you know, you get your meat hooks right into it. So I, um, I got this guitar, but you know what? Around that time, this is like 89. I think it's 89. It could be 90, but I think it's 89. Very busy year for me. Um, I decide I want a Strat. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. My body is ready. It's time for another strat. And um, and they had just moved from the Squire name on Fender Imports to both Squire, and in fact, Squire might, at that point might have even gone to either Korea or Mexico. But... Um, they started the plant because, quite frankly, the the squires were too nice, and they said we should just fender brand these because and get rid of the squire thing, and which is what they did, and they made a bunch of um, fenders. I think starting in either eighty eight or eighty nine, and they had the fender branding instead of the the squire branding, and um, but they're all, and they're all made by Fuji Gen, right? Which, is, quite frankly. A company that was kicking Fender's ass for from between say eighty two and you know up until about eighty seven when they finally you know got their new plant going and and uh, came out with the American Standard and their new vintage series. It was a whole whole thing. But um, let me I, I have that. This is not one that's like it this is the guitar from 1989 the actual one just like this one Let's see the the original hold on This is an ST54, and um, MIJ by Fuji Gen. I think it's made in 89 or 90. Hold on. Let's take a look here. Oh, Jesus, I'm losing my friggin' eyesight. 90. 1990. So it's a it's a 1990. Uh, it's got a hard V. Look at that! Look at that hard V. You see that where it dips, where it meets at the. It's got a hard V neck. <laughs> and it actually did suffer a little bit of water damage. You see, it's a little warp down there. But this was up on a stand, unlike the Ibby, which was on the floor. So this one didn't quite, you know, it's a little bit more relict than anything. I think these are basswood bodies. Uh, the pickups are not original. I put EMGs in it because I was on a big EMG kick for a while. Uh, but these are Lace Sensor Holy Grails, which is their, like, top-of-the-line 50s pickup. And uh, I really, really love these pickups. I think it's the only lay sensor pickup I really like. I'm not crazy about their other stuff, but this particular pickup, the Holy Grails, 
Uh, pretty good. The um, the bridge is slightly harder than the rest, but it's uh, supposed to be like that. Like there are fifty. <laughs> I played this guitar for years as my only guitar. I, yeah, I have to take my glasses off to see them. You have to put yours on, yeah. No, I didn't lose my close vision. It's my far vision that sucks. Or my close vision when I'm wearing my glasses. Though they are um, bifocals, you know, to get rid of the magnification down here and make them almost kind of clear. But uh, it's not as good as when you just take them off. That's the clearest. What's that, YouTube? Now would be a good time to run an ad. Creators earn more money inserting ads. The more viewers are watching, the more money. Give it a try. I told you on Christmas. I'm saving all my ads for the Christmas show. These aren't worth that much money because they made a ton of them. So they're probably worth, you know. Although they have shot up recently. They went from around five to six hundred bucks up to seven to eight hundred. The last time I was looking online, they're all like eleven, twelve hundred bucks now. So they're definitely they're definitely shooting up in recent years because people realize it's uh, really good. I changed out the disc for a graphite because it, it kept it in tune better. And I don't give a shit about the original look. Like whatever. I'm more practical. It's a great guitar though. It's one of my favorite guitars. This is this is one that has just lasted all the years. You know, that's the original pick card, original knobs. Uh, the only thing that's uh, changed is the um, the pickups. <laughs> You know, I could clean the neck up a little bit. I have a couple of dents here. I could drop fill those with a little bit of uh, this one right here. It's really annoying. I could drop fill that. What's that in the back of the trim? I I, I have a um, uh, what do they call that? A um, a, a mag trim or trim mag? What is it? Is it mag trim or trim mag? Mag lock. Like Matlock, but mag. It's a magnetic lock to kind of create a notch so that when you bend, the, the bridge doesn't pull forward. But then when you use the trim, it releases from the magnet and it works good. You see that? It's to give you a little bit more stability so you can kind of have a floating trim and uh, don't have to worry about when you bend a string. All right, you can. Yeah, it's like a trim setter, but it's it works differently. And quite frankly, it doesn't I think the trim setter and there's another one out there that I think works a little better. Another uh, piston, spring-loaded piston. Glue boost will work for those dents. Yeah, you know I I've had pretty good luck. You know, Bobby had a guitar with a bunch of dents. I filled him, and he couldn't believe it. He's like, what a difference. I'm like, yeah, you can, if you drop fill it, you know, you can use, um, you know, you, you sort of you, you tape the area off so you don't get it too, you know, you don't want to go nuts. But you sort of fill it in, and then you, you just work with the polishing pads, right, until you get, like, the super bright polishing pad, and then it's, like, it's like brand new. It's amazing. <laughs>
it's a great chord progression there. And then, will the wind? Did, did they call it wind cries? Is that one of the PRS? Are they worried about the? Uh, are they worried about the estate coming after them? Hmm. The Hendrix estate seems um to have no sense of humor about any of that. These are um, a Lace Sensor Holy Grails, which is a 50s, you know, because this is a 50s, you know, this is supposed to be a 54. So, you know, it's based off the bell-like chime of the 50s pickup, but they're not noiseless, but they are less noise, if that makes any sense whatsoever, <laughs> right? They don't eliminate noise. But they do like some wonky thing with the magnets to make the noise. It really reduces the noise. I forgot how awesome this neck is. Yeah. Yeah, so here's a great little trick. Check this out. Uh, where can I get it? Maybe uh So get get these two strings here, right? That's the G string and the B string, right? Kind of get them together. You see that? All right, you, you, you get them together. And what you're doing is, because they're right next to each other, you're kind of pre-bending, right? And what you're going to do is you, 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 you hit the G string, and you bend up. So you do a pre-bend, and you drop it down. And then you hit the, G, the the B string, and you and you bring it up. So it, all together, it sounds like this. Almost like a little. Um, it's easy to do it down here. It, it's like a little pedal steel lick, you know. Again, you got you have to kind of pre bend it. Right here. Right, dig. Kind of a like, like a little country, you know, little country riff. Rubby. Oh, that's A, okay. So. All right. All right. You're going from the, the 7 to the 1. All right, right. There it is. Got it. Yeah. Well, to, to do the bell, you got to do it on the one plane and one... I've tried this with all combinations. The best combination is one plane and one uh, wound string. So that's, of course, going to be the D and the G. You cross those over. And I, th I think it sounds better a little lower. And then... you got to kind of pluck them together. Shame. 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 <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Spam. Spam. Spam.
Spam and eggs. Speaking of spam and eggs, I uh, we took a Maine trip. We went up to Maine. Oh yeah, oh up in Maine. Oh sure, because Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh yeah, go up to Maine and get yourself a blueberry pie. And um, we went up and stopped at Kinnebunk and worked our way out to Kinnebunk Port. Went by the Bush Compound, Walker's Point, for George Herbert Walker Bush. They own the peninsula <laughs> at Blowing Cove. Blowing Cave? Blowing Cove? <laughs> Was it, is that in the uh, BJ Inlet? And then, uh, <laughs> then uh, we went uh, kind of along the coast. I tell you what, a nice Gooch's Beach was really nice. And it was low tides. So we went out to Gooch's Beach and went out there for a while. And then sort of made our way more south and... Um, Made our way down to the um, Rachel Carson Preserve, which is uh, pretty cool. It's like a um, it's like a one mile walk. And they like they have a path that they have all set up, and they have like different stations you can go to. It's really cool. It's like a one mile, maybe one point one miles. And so we went through there. That was cool. Busy. A lot of people. You know, it was a beautiful day. A lot of people were out and about going through. So it was, it was pretty cool. And uh, they actually even have a post. And they're like, we keep, they're like, um, you put your, your phone in this like little notch. And they're like, put your phone in this notch and then take a photo and you send it to this, like you text it to an address or whatever. And they keep an eye on the bay. Right? It's a way to keep a log. They crowdsource the data. But they need to have the same shot all the time. So that's why they have you put your phone in this like little notch. So it's always looking in the same direction. It's, pre it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we got out of there and then we went over to the main diner. That's where all this was at eight. I went with breakfast. The wife went with lunch. <laughs> and uh, we're so different. And yet somehow we're falling in love. It was our 20th wedding anniversary, so. so it was a nice little trip. And then we just worked our way back south, you know, along the coast, and then headed home. It was a nice little trip, nice little main trip. RG560, sorry, I wish they'd do a Genesis 560. Yeah, I, you know, I wish they would do a Genesis 560, you know. I mean, they're doing the 550. Gonna buy the horse meat? Probably not. up over hash and toast i wound up going with the um with the irish benedict which is uh basically eggs benedict but instead of you know ham they use um corned beef hash so it was really good it was really good it was actually pretty it was pretty pretty damn good i also want to try congdon donuts but they closed so early by the time we you know we went up and did the Kind of bunkport thing and Gucci's Beach and the Rachel Carson walk. It was too late in the day. They closed at two. You know, we were just getting out of. You know, we were going to the main diner at like a little after one, so we didn't get out of there till like pretty much a little after two, and uh, we missed them. But I wouldn't mind trying them. They they seem to have a good rep up there. <laughs> I'm going, what am I going through? 
What am I going through? I'm going through the DOD, YJM. Everybody loves that. It's the Brit. It's the Brit. Yeah, the Brit 87. See, they can't say Marshall. That gets a cease and desist letter. So they call it the, the Brit 87, but they use a, uh, an Ingve J. Malmsteen DOD 308. Is that what it is? The 308, like overdrive. <laughs> In the uh, in the in, in front of it. I love this guitar. I love the way it sounds. You know, twenty-two years. But luckily, your wife hasn't murdered you yet. Yet being the operative word there. I'd keep one eye open, dude. <laughs> uh, Lee's and Kittery has amazing donuts. Oh, yeah, you know, because we're thinking about going back up in a few weeks because the leaves were sort of just changing and they actually don't change too early on, uh, near the coast, right? That, that the coast that inland, it changes well, way faster. So you're thinking about maybe going back in a few weeks when the leaves have turned more and... Um, Going further south, we got back on at like, ooh, I want to say, just a little bit south of like Ware's Beach. So, uh, is it Ware's Beach? No, that's like Laconia. What's the other one? Win Winds Beach? What's it? Wells Beach. Wells Beach. That's the coastal one. I think Ware's Beach is it. That's in like Laconia. That's a that's a different thing. Um, Wells Beach. So I think we would stay probably on one and not get back on the highway and just work our way down. I heard is it um, is it Bob's Clam Shack? They say that's really good. So maybe we we'll go up and do that. <laughs> does it go to eleven? Sadly, it does not. My PV goes to 13. Which is, as I understand it, too louder than 11. That's just science. Oh, that is good. Take the trolley. Gale warning tomorrow. I don't need that. The leaves will be gone. Yeah. That's what happens, right? You get one good windstorm and all the trees get stripped. Oh my God, that is good. Miss the moose hunt. Get the moose knuckle. Got my moose stuck, stuck in my camel toe. Do -da 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 -do. Clam shack next to Kittery Trading Post says new owners reports are not good. Oh, is that it, is was that Bob's clam shack? Because you, you wonder, right, Bob gets old. He's got a rep, <laughs> right? They wind up selling it, but the new people just can't quite capture the magic, right? So that, that would be interesting. I'll have to, have to triple check on that. You're having a Folgers. Look at you. I do have a, is that what I have? Is that what it is? A, an Earth 3 T80? T380? I think that's what I have, a green one. Yeah, those are great guitars. It's a, a roasted, is it roasted maple neck on that? I think so. I did a video on it. For all my thoughts on it, I would 
refer you to that video. <laughs>
Let me think about that. So is the LSR, was that the one that Fender was using for a while there with the um, with the rollers? With the little pin, pin rollers in it? I, I did have a guitar with one of those in it. Um, you got to treat them with dry lube, like a graphite or something like that, some sort of a powder. Uh, any wet lube, I guess, uh, gums them up. But uh, they seem to work. I think I, I think I had one of those in one of my, I think my like deluxe Strat had one. Do lobe. The, the Kramer from, like, in the late 90s? Uh, no, not 90s. It would have been the 80s. Late 80s where they had the metal. They put the metal plate. I've never tried one. That's one of the rarest Kramers out there. It was at the very end of their of their run. But, yeah, you had the, it had, like, a metal. They would add pieces of metal to add sustain. It would be a thin body with a big chunk of metal on it. <laughs> After walking 12 hours today, I'm ready to sleep. I tell you, last night I was like that. I was sitting in my chair going, you should just go to bed. And then all of a sudden I go like, it'd be like 30 minutes later. <laughs> like, you should just go to bed. I'm going to bed. I'm just going to just gonna rest my eyes a second. 30 minutes later. <laughs> where, where am I? <laughs> just go to bed. Stick with this, go back to the Kramer, go back to the Ibby. What do you think? You liking the you liking the fender? I act like an old man, why well, I am an old man. Like back in my day. You had three channels and you liked it. Speakers saying Kramer. I think these pickups sound amazing too. Like I said, usually I don't like lace sensors, but these these are pretty good. The the holy grails. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm switching up to the Kramer. There we go. I haven't played this Kramer in a while. What's up, Kramy? Oh. There we go. We get this, and then we get that. This is a heavy guitar. It's a solid maple body. It's a Mapale. Hey. 
It's still bright. It's so funny. Yeah, you would think it'd be a huge bass boost, but you know, between the maple and the maple and all the other maple. Shirts and tunia. I've been on uh, YouTube now, I think about 12 years. I think I started in 20, well, I opened my account in 2009, but I don't think the first video goes up until 2010. started watching wow you better yeah that sounds about right yeah the end of the end of 2009 november 13th 2009 and about 20 million views look at, look at me with the 20 mil i remember me with less gray hair too in fact every year prior year i go back it seems to get less and less gray if we got to stretch the strings, we're considering these strings are probably six months old. I'm going to say no. I've already used it in like four different videos. Uh, I'm going to say that it, it sat in the case for, you know, a few months and it just needs, you know, a little assistance. This is a very elderly guitar. You know, let's not, let's not ageism this guitar. I, I mainly use these, uh, these are the picks I use most of the time, Dawman. Man. I think Dawman's Man's moving. He's going to move out of Belarus because he can't sell anything out of Belarus with the sanctions. So I, I think he might be moving. <laughs> Thank you. 
Stage Master One. Oh yeah, yeah, the white one. The white SM one. You can remember the the pre goatee years. Technically, it goes down the side, but it's turned so white you can't see it anymore. Yep. The finish on this is awesome. Oh yeah. I remember seeing this. It was on uh, Guitar Center used for three three twenty five. Three and a quarter. I called the dude right up. Guy I think I bought it out of New Jersey. Maybe North Carolina. I thought it was New Jersey. I called the dude right up. And I was like, oh dude, that Kramer. It's like calling my name. He's like, you know, it's actually in pretty good shape. I'm like, oh I hang up. I call him back like 10 minutes later. I'm like, I, I, I got to get it. I, I got to do it. And um, I said, you don't happen to have a case for it. He goes, I'll find you a case. And he did. He sent a nice, didn't come with a case, but he sent it in a, a pretty nice um, Roadrunner. Um, what do they, I guess that they call that the, uh, it's like a foam case. It's a case. It's a hard case, but it's like made out of, it's very light. It's like a foam foam case it's it's great Growing a ZZ Top beard. That could take a while. I know, what a deal, right? If you could play any concert, any guitar from any concert, what would it be? I don't know. It'd be tough to say. I, you know, part of me would say, you know, um, like one of the page Les Pauls from the you know, some of those uh, 70s shows. You know, another part of me would say, you know, maybe an, one of the 80s guitars. But you know what? I'm going Hydra. Recommended in the Boston to refinish an old Rick bass. Oh, I have no idea. Damn. What do you think about Wolf of Van Halen nailing all dad's riffs? I thought it was pretty good. They weren't, it wasn't perfect. You know, I still think, uh, like Jacob Draps, there's a few guys out there that, you know, but uh, it was close. I'd give him, a, I'm giving him a score like 99 out of 100. I thought it was, it was pretty damn good. He's in a he's in a short list of people that got the feel down, you know. Les Pauls are great till you hit your forties and fifties in the back. I know, but you know what? I gotta say, lately I've been getting a little bit more into like some of the Aerosmith stuff. And there's nothing like just pulling out a big, heavy Les Paul and playing a bunch of Aerosmith riffs on it. You know, it's a little, it's a bit sublime. The Hydras are sold out? What? All right, I, I guess I'm going uh, PRS Double Neck.
What's that bed, Tom? Where are you going? At my local dispensary had 40% off one day, so I cleaned them out of 31 grams of... Oh, my God. i to be careful with the concentrate. What you got here, boy? Uh, just a little concentrate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need you to step out of the car. <laughs> Still go for Ibanez. Ibanez is good. If he's a good, if he's a good. If you look at his performance, we'll see he has a lot of dad's mannerisms. Oh, I'm sure. Oh my God, you can see that with kids when they're around their parents. God, they act like them. You know, I remember like you know, a friend of mine in school like leaning against the door exactly like his dad. You know, walking like his dad. It's crazy. You know, you do you pick up your, your parents' mannerisms quite a bit, actually. It, it, wait, is, did you just say ten dollars an ounce? That can't be right. You mean a gram? Ten dollars an ounce? I think you mean ten dollars a gram. Let's listen. We have to we have to check our metric and imperial systems right now, because you're uh, that you know. an ounce that's uh wow like when I was 14 in like 1980 it was 40 dollars an ounce talk about anti info Let's talk about a saturated market yeah when we went up to Maine I stopped at a couple of dispensaries and um, we didn't get a ton but um, boy the prices were cheaper up there much cheaper than Massachusetts without a doubt much cheaper and really, really amazing stuff, too. Top quality. Top quality for short money. But uh, down here, the best you can do is about 100 an ounce. It's really like 150 is pretty standard. Um, the dispensary, the direct dispensaries, there's a, there's a race to the bottom. I'm noticing a lot more price wars going on right now. Uh, but still, by the time you get done with the tax, it's a 20% tax. It kind of, you might as well just go to a med place if you, if you can, if you got the card. That is crazy. $10 an ounce. Oh my God, dude. That's, uh, that's crazy. You only know, do the concentrates. I got a buddy that's, he, he won't do, only you know, does the concentrates, but the concentrates are, the, it, 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 it's too concentrated. Feels like your lungs are on fire. It's like that stuff. It, it, it's it, it, it's too much. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. I guess it is saturated. <laughs> well, someone's losing money somewhere. You know, if you have the pain level I have, it's not too concentrated. Yeah, the pain in here, because because of my my heart, because my lungs are on fire. Yeah, you did. He did it. Jesus, here I am thinking I'm doing good, getting like a twenty dollar eighth, and you're like twenty dollar eighth. I'm getting eight times that for half the money. I'm like, hmm, okay, uh, touche. Yeah, we're talking about guitars. We're talking about, uh, 
I know I can't even play now. I'm so amazed. See it. Amazing Skywalker Sugar, yeah. You know, those places, up, I don't get it because I don't, I don't do the concentrates, but, you know, up in Maine, um, I, you know, some of those places, they do like a friggin' quarter ounce of those concentrates for like, feels like 50 bucks. It's like 10 bucks a gram there. It's like, it, it's crazy how cheap the concentrates are up there. Down here, they're much more, I, again, I don't purchase that stuff, but, you know, you see it on the menu. You see them on there. Play the stairway solo, you gotta be careful with that one. Need the high THC, yeah. I like I like the THC somewhere in the nineties. <laughs> That's what you get with those concentrates. It's like Jesus, which is like triple even the the highest flower. I'm saying, yeah, that is crazy. That is crazy. $10 an ounce, an ounce. I was like, I'm, getting, I'm going, no, 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 no. It's $10 a gram, $280 an ounce. You're like, no, 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 seriously, like $10 an ounce. It's like, the market saturated. It's like, what? I guess so. You know, it's like when you bought a digital watch for, you know, $750. And then five years later, you got one for free with a, you know, a full tank of gas at a gas station. You know, talk about price crashing. Calculators the same way. You know, went from a thousand dollars down to like, you know, uh, free if you open a bank account. That is crazy. The high concentrates help with an amputated finger. Wish I'd be a flying V someday. 
Dare to dream. Someday I'll be a flying bee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, mind, that's blowing my mind more than those concentrates. <laughs> The Michigan, Michigan weed market is, they should just decriminalize it like federally. I think because, you know, all these places are still cash only because they don't dare take any money and put it in the bank. They're so worried about having their bank account seized by the feds, you know, so they're, they're real. The paranoia runs deep and then not just because of the weed. Well, thanks, Chris. Fun chat. I'm a newbie. Just saying, hey, hey, thanks, bud. Much appreciated. Fig Newtons, no way. Cheesecake Factory. Well, really, the main diner. There were a lot of people in that diner that looked like me. Middle-aged, a little gray, you know, and they're getting diner food. <laughs> Your local dispensary takes debit cards now? Yeah, they won't do that. Nobody does it up here. They all have those stupid cell phone, you know, they all have those stupid, like, um, uh, Um, what you call it there? Uh, ATMs. You know, got like antennas on the top, and they're very expensive. And they always round up to like five dollars or something like that. It, 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 it's very. You know, just go to it. Just hit a bank machine. Got to pay cash in all these places. <laughs> <laughs> Drop a little cheesecake off. <laughs> hmm. Thanks, Black. Thanks, Black Jack. For the coffee fun, Steve. Thank you. Always appreciated. You know, it's funny because they, they finally had the Starbucks back in stock and we we didn't get it because the, with the, the new Kirkland stuff is pretty much the same stuff, but it's still cheaper. Even with, even with the, um, the Starbucks on sale, it's still cheaper. See, so buy a flying V. Oh, okay. That's different. <laughs> you know, I, I had a flying V once. Um, I like the white ones. I think they look pretty badass. Like the white 70s ones. You see them show up once in a while on um, Guitar Center Used, but you got to be quick if you want just the right year, which would be like a late, like a late 90s. Oh, man. I am tired. <laughs> I know we have to set up an herb fund. <laughs> that that stuff that, that stuff isn't cheap. Uh, he's still on your PV sixty five oh five plus one twelve. It is right there. There it is. I've thought about selling it, but it's so heavy. It's got to be a local sale, and local sales are such a pain in the ass. I feel like I'm kind of stuck with it. It's much easier to sell a guitar at effects pedal. It's much much harder to sell. Um. Amps, have big heavy amps.
Yeah, V's are a pain in the ass to play sitting down. And to some degree, explorers too. Yeah, you have to have your right foot drop. What? You ready to go upstairs? You? Oh, someone's tired. You coming over? No, you look exhausted. You look tired. <laughs> Have a play through which tube amp? This one? Yeah, in fact, it, if you notice, it's changed. The, the rev was there last week. We just switched it around. Yeah, a tube amp there, and a tube amp there, and a, a tube amp over there. You know, when it's cold down here, I turn them on, kind of warm the place up. It's good. <laughs> I had to plug in. Uh, it's probably going to be this because it has all the effects in it. The um, the Houston Kettner Deluxe Forty. That's a great amp. Plus, it's got all your, you know, all your effects. Ever try a positive grid spark? Of course. I've done several videos. Yeah, pretty expensive space heaters, but you know, they do the job. Fingertips were cold, toes were cold. Could see your breath. Yeah, yeah. We finally got pretty chilly around here. But not too bad. I don't think we've had a frost yet. Uh, are you ready to keep the basement safe during the flood season? I think so. It's been so far. It's been pretty good. We've been in a pretty massive drought, but we've had a few. Um, you know, uh, rain events that have sort of brought that back a little bit, but uh, we're still far below. I mean, the, the sump is fairly empty, uh, you know, relative to where it normally is, you know, kind of year round. <laughs> in the 40s recently. Yeah, we were down to, I think, 39. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. I'm digging that crap. If you could buy one new today, which model would you recommend? I kind of like the SM1. That's a really good... I think that's sort of like their flagship. You know, the, the SM ones are really good. They use Duncans in it now. They used to use EMGs, but they're all Duncans now. Uh, you know, and then there's uh, they they do the graphics collection. Um, you know, and they do the Pacer, but I'm still going SM one. I think. I think that's the sort of the the full Kramer experience: pointy headstock, binding, ebony fretboard. You know, single, single, double, carved top. Your nephew Josh says, hi. Hi, Josh. How are you? He a safe you built half of the guitar. You're zero Celsius already, yeah. We haven't hit that. We've probably hit around um, like four or five Celsius. I bet that's about as low as we've gone. I know the SM1 inlays. I know. I know. They're not. They're not for everybody. 
I'll give you that. So if you don't like that, I'd, I'd go Pacer. I'd go Pacer. You know. All right, dudes. Well, it's 9 p.m. I probably need another coffee. I'm freaking yawning over here. Thanks to everybody for hanging out. Awesome. Steve, never go full Kramer. <laughs> I try not to. Try not to, but it, it, I, I know what you're saying. Never go full Kramer. That is, that is Kramer. The SM1 is Kramer on top of Kramer. They put their name both in the inlay and on the headstock. And, of course, the inlays are a replica of the headstock. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, it, it, it's quite, it's an inception level of uh, design. Kramer within a Kramer within a Kramer, a Russian nesting, you know, doll <laughs> kind of experience. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, hanging out tonight. Super extra thanks for anyone who contributed. That is always appreciated. Really appreciate that. And, of course, bro fist to my mod squad. Hashtag mod squad. And I'll see you guys in a week. I, I might actually get some videos out this week. I got my my got my uh, computer, you know, working again, and I got a bunch of crap out of the way. So it could could be time could be time to actually you know make some videos. You know what happens? It's the Russian nesting Kramer exactly. So you guys have a wonderful uh, weekend, and uh, maybe I'll see you this week. But definitely. We will do it all again a week from tonight. No, you rock. And so have a wonderful week. And we'll see you. Uh, there you go. And don't forget, uh, the Ben Coombsy show is on Sunday nights, I think, at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And, um, and there you go. Who do you have on there tomorrow, uh, Ben? Who, who you got? Who, who's the guest? Who, who's who's the guest, Ben? We're waiting. Ben Coombs, who's the guest? Ben Coombs, who's the guest? Ben Coombs has RJ on video tomorrow. It's RJ. Well, there you go. I just wrote that. I just wrote that. So inspired. I'm always inspired by the chat. No. You rock. All right, dudes. I'll see you in a week. Maybe sooner. How's that? <laughs> you, can say, you can set your watch to it. All right. No, you rock. I'll see you in a week. And there you have it. Later. <laughs>